And now I will now read a Disney classic story of the Lion King. The animals came from far and near across the dusty African plain. They came on padding paws and pounding hooves and flapping wings. Each beast, from the tiniest ant to the largest elephant, made its way to Pride Rock, for that was the home of the Lion King. And this was a special day in the Pride Lands. Today, Simba, the firstborn child of King Mufasa and Queen Sarabi, would join the great circle of life. The animals took their places and bowed to King Mufasa. The Rafiti, the wise baboon, stood at the edge of Pride Rock and held up the little cub for all to see. A great cry rose from all the animals. The elephants trumpeted, the zebras want we need, and the birds sang for joy at the sight of Simba, the future Lion King. But one animal did not join in the joyous ceremony, Scar, the king's just brother, staying in his den. Later, Scar just left when the king's advisor, Zazu the Hornbill, criticized him. The evil lion popped the bird into his mouth. Scar would have eaten Zazu and Mufasa hadn't come along just in time. Zazu wiped his feathers off and scolded, As the king's brother, you should be first in the lo in line at Simba's ceremony. Scar's green eyes gleamed. I was first in line until that little hairball was born. That hairball is my son and your future king, Mufasa growled. Scar slinked away. Don't you turn your back on me, Mufasa warned. Scar looked back over his shoulder, his eyes narrowed. Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me. Simba grew quickly. One morning, Mufasa took his son to the top of Pride Rock and told him, The circle of life never stops turning. One day, the sun will set on my time as ruler and rise with you as king. The enemy of the light touches will be yours. What about that shadowy place? Simba asked. Mufasa declared, You must never go there. Suddenly, Zazu swooped down and squawked, Hyenas in the Pride Lands! Mufasa frowned. Zazu, take Simba home. Aw, Dad, can't I come? Simba whined. Mufasa shook his mighty mane. Fighting savage hyenas was no job for a cub. Later, Simba asked his uncle Scar about the shadowy place. Any of the plan formed in Scar's mind. Only the bravest lions go to the elephant graveyard. Scar told him he knew that the foolish cub would go there just to prove his bravery. Scar was right. Simba couldn't wait to go up to the elephant graveyard with his best friend Nala. But how can they go with Zazu watching every move they made? We got a ditch for Doo -doo, the dodo, Simba whispered. Nala giggled and breed. Soon the two friends found a way to escape their feathered babysitter. Before long, the young lions had reached the dark, mysterious place beyond the borders of the Pride Lands. Giant bones poked out of the ground. It's kind of scary, Nala whispered. Let's check it out, Simba said. I laugh in the face of danger. Ha ha ha! Cackled three mean hyenas Shenzi, Banzai, and Ed. Blood boys, a keen for fit for a meal, Shanzi snickered. The cubs ran but soon found themselves cornered. Simba stepped bravely in front of Nala and tried to roar. Arrgh! The hyenas laughed and jeered. Simba opened his mouth to try again. This time the elven bones rattled with a thunderous roar. The hyenas were confused, and so was Simba until Mufasa sprang into view. The mighty lion chased away the hyenas. Zazu had seen the cubs in trouble and flown for help. Mufasa told Zazu to take Nala home, and he scolded Simba for disobeying him. Aw, Dad, I was just trying to be brave like you, Simba explained. Mufasa sighed. Being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble, Simba. I go keen as wise as well as brave. Simba suddenly felt very small. Oh, it's been together, right, Dad? Mufasa looked up at the starry sky and said, The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. So whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you, and so will I. Later, Scar met with the hungry hyenas. I practically gave those cubs to you, he complained. They weren't exactly alone. They weren't, they weren't exactly alone. Shenzi went, Winnie, Shenzi whined. But Scar had another plan that would allow him to become king. 
Stick with me, and you'll never go hungry again, he promised. The hyenas danced and jeered. The next morning, Scar took Simba to the bottom of a rocky canyon. Now wait here, he ordered. Your father has a big surprise for you. Well, I like the surprise, Simba asked. Scar smiled slightly. Oh, it's to die for, he said as he walked away. And he gave a signal to the hyenas waiting on the canyon ridge. The hyenas knew what to do. They chased a huge herd of wildebeest down the canyon. Simba felt the art beat. Simba felt the earth shake. He heard the clattering of thousands of hooves. Then he saw the wildebeest heading straight for him. Simba managed to climb a dead tree and cling to a branch. Help! he shouted. Help was on its way. For Scar, he found his brother. Lufasa, Simba's trapped in a stampede, Scar cried. Just as Scar had planned, Lufasa rushed to Simba's rescue. He lifted his son to safety, but then fell under the rushing tide of hooves. Dad! Simba shouted. He couldn't see anything through the huge dust cloud. Lufasa tried to pull himself up the steep rocks from above. Scar watched his brother struggle. Help me, brother! Help me! Lufasa pleaded. Scar reached for Lufasa's paws. He pulled his brother close and whispered, Long live the king. And Scar let go and watched Mufasa tumble down the steep slope. When the stampede was over, Simba found his father lying lifeless in the dust. No! Simba wailed. Scar came to the sobbing cub side. What have you done? He accused. There are wolves everywhere. He tried to save me. It was an accident. Simba said in a rush. He didn't mean to. Of course not. But if it weren't for you, he'd still be alive. What do you ever think? Scar demanded. Simba looked stricken. What should I do? Run away, Scar advised. Run away and never come back. Scar watched Simba run, and he sent the hyenas after him. The hyenas chased Simba to the border of the Pride Lands. The cub divided into a thicket of thorns at the edge of the great desert. The hyenas looked at the sharp thorns, then at the desert, the cub. The cub won't last a day out there, Shamsi declared. Simba ran until he could run no more. First he called glass on the sand. Vultures circled him hungrily. But to Maul the meerkat and his fat friend, Puma the warpaw, chased away the vultures. Simba woke up in their jungle home. Where are you from? Timon asked. Simba sighed. It doesn't matter. I can't go back. What'd you do, kid? Puma wondered. Something terrible, Simba replied. Simon shrugged. Look, heirs, you got to put the past behind you. Hakuna Matata. What? Simon asked. Hakuna Matata. Simon repeated. It means no worries. That's the model we live by. And here's what we live on. Simon showed Simon a willy insect. Simba watched Puma eat a grub. Slimy but satisfying, the warthog said with a burp. Ugh. Simba frowned, but he ate the big grub. Then the cow's mouth said, Hakuna Matata. In the months that followed, Simba ate many, many rubs and grew into a full sized lion. Most of the time he was happy with his friends Timon and Boomba, yet he missed his mother and often thought of his father. One night, as they gazed out of the stars, Simba remembered what his father had told him. He wondered if the great kings of the past where they were looking down from those stars. Simba felt very alone. The next day, Simba heard Simone scream. The young lion raced to the rescue. A hungry lioness was about to pounce on Puma, who was stuck under a log. Simone Bradley was trying to protect him. Simba gave a mighty roar and leaped at the lioness. But just as they began to fight, Simba recognized his old friend. Nala, he asked in disbelief. The lioness looked deep into the eyes of the handsome young lion and whispered, Simba, Scott told us you were dead. Nala told Simba how terrible things were not that King Sun and his hyenas ruled the Pride Lands. There was no food or water, and many of the animals had fled. But he, but he can come back and become king, then everything will be right again. Nala said, I'm no king, Simba said angrily. But that night, Rafiki the baboon came to Simba and promised to bring him to his father. When Simba looked up at the stars, he heard a familiar voice. Simba, he asked, his father asked. Have you forgotten me? Simba gasped. No, how could I? 
You have forgotten who you are, and so have forgotten me. The ghostly voice continued, Look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. You must take a place in the circle of life. Simba knew his father was right. His friends returned with him to the Pride Lands. Back at Pride Rock, he and Scar was angry with Sarabi for not finding food. Suddenly, Scar heard a great roar. He couldn't believe his eyes. Mufasa, it can't be. You're dead. But Sarabi recognized her son. Simba? She said softly. I've gone into my place as king, Simba roared. But Scar would not bat down so easily. Simba leaved the star, but the villain slipped away and sent the hyenas rushed at Simba. Pride Rock echoed with the hideous laughter as the hyenas forced Simba to the edge of the cliff. Scar walked up to the exhausted young lion. Your daddy isn't here to save you this time, Scar taunted. And then he pushed Simba off the cliff. Simba's claws scrambled for a hole on the steep slope. This looks familiar, Scar sneered. Oh yes, I remember. It's just the way your father lived before. Oh yes, I remember. It's just the way your father lived before I killed him. At last Simba knew the truth. With a mighty roar, he lit that scar, a scar. Meanwhile, Timon, Puma, and the lioness had chased the hyenas off Pride Rock. When Simba sent Star flying all over the cliff, the villain landed in a mob of hungry hyenas. <laughs> they cackled cruelly, finding they had a meal fit for a king. Or a king fit for a meal. <laughs> Simba faint his friend, then he walked to the top of Pride Rock. His roar echoed through the Pride Lands. The rightful king had taken his throne. The plains were soon lost in green again. The animal was returned, and the hunting was good once more. Simba knew that a king must have a queen, so of course he chose the beautiful Nala. Before long, the animals again came from far and near across the dusty African plain. This time, they came to greet the firstborn tribe of King Simba and Queen Nala. Wise old Rafiki stood at the edge of Pride Rock and held up the cup for all to see. The elephants charmed it, and the zebras waiting for joy as the future Lion King joined the great circle of life. The end. Why, I hope you like this story, guys. We'll always be in the great circle of life. Quahari!